Bro, some 20 year old just raised 3 million for his AI startup. I don't even know what a transformer is. I'm finished. I should have started earlier. You good, Timmy? No, Peter, I'm not good. Everyone's building LLMs and getting fang offers. I just spent 45 minutes trying to understand linear regression. <laughs> Timmy, I don't even check LinkedIn. I just build one project a week. You want to feel ahead? Stop watching everyone else and go learn PyTorch. But I like TensorFlow. In the past year, I've helped thousands of people land their dream offer in AI engineering. I myself in the past year landed offers at companies like Amazon and Google paying over $200,000 a year. In this video, I'll be breaking down the one reason why most people completely fail to land their dream offer. It's not because of leak code, it's not because of their projects, it's not because they're spending too much time on theory, it's not any of those things. In fact, I've never talked about this specific aspect of the job hunting process anywhere on my channel before. You see, if you're struggling to land a job right now, it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. There's tons of outdated advice out there and it's hard to tell what actually works. So pay close attention because over the next several minutes, I'm going to break down what this mistake is, why it's so harmful, and most importantly, how to fix it so that you can land your dream offer. The biggest mistake is actually having no strategy at all. You're grinding lead code, building random projects, sending out a bunch of cold applications without a clear plan tailored to your specific goal. And again, this isn't your fault. There's so much outdated and generic advice out there. Like, just apply to a thousand companies or grind lead code until your fingers fall off. What happens? You burn out, you feel discouraged, and you keep spinning your wheels. You're following someone else's strategy, or worse, no playbook at all. There's this false belief that the same strategy is going to work for everyone when it comes to breaking into AI ML. But AI engineering isn't one game, it's many different games depending on your target. And if you don't know which game you're playing, you can't win. Let me explain what that actually means with a quick story. You see, I've seen brilliant students get ghosted at Fang because they had amazing portfolios but no leak code skills. They didn't realize how important leak code is for Fang. On the flip side, I've seen people waste months grinding leak code, which honestly doesn't matter that much for smaller companies. Smaller companies are more interested in what you can actually build, and it's getting experience at those smaller companies that's actually gonna get you into Fang one day. The key is focusing on the right constraint at the right stage of your journey. Ask yourself, what are you actually aiming for? Startups, for example, want builders. They care a lot about what you've actually shipped. Quick iteration, value creation, and adaptability matter most here. Put simply, they want to see, can you build something that solves a real problem? For AI, think working prototypes, scrappy MVPs, visible output. Fortune 500 companies? They care about reliability, teamwork, alignment with company processes. AI is often applied in more conservative, business-driven contexts. Proof that you can actually work within constraints will be key here. They want to see a solid portfolio plus evidence of collaboration. And then there's FANG and big tech. Now, lead code starts to matter. These companies filter hard based on your data structure skills. But portfolio still matters a ton. It gets you the interview, and it also helps you stand out once you're actually talking to a hiring manager. They want to see if you can solve tough problems, and they also want to see proof that you can apply AI in real-world settings. Lastly, quant and hedge funds. These guys are focused on mathematical depth, algorithmic thinking, and originality. They want to see a deep theoretical understanding. They want to see that you can work with cutting-edge models and even innovate. If you don't match your approach to the game that you're playing, you'll waste time, you won't build the right skill set, and you'll constantly feel behind. All because you're chasing advice that was never meant for you. Here's another example. Someone aiming for Fang who has a fantastic portfolio will get the interview, but if they don't grind lead code, they're gonna fail the interview. On the other hand, someone aiming for a startup or a Fortune 500 company, if they only focus on lead code and they have no portfolio, they're gonna get zero offers. They're gonna get passed over because it doesn't seem like they can build anything of actual value. 
The foundation, no matter your path, is your portfolio. Everyone from startups to Fortune 500 to Fang to Quant, they want to see that you can apply AI to real world problems. Projects that clearly show results, whether it's a working chatbot, an AI powered app, or even a recommendation system, something of actual value. Once you have your portfolio, that's when you can enter the invisible hiring funnel. This is when your portfolio pulls opportunities toward you. Recruiters, hiring managers, and companies reach out to you. You stop spamming applications and start attracting interest. But the portfolio is what lets you even enter this funnel. Because when people see you as the person who can actually build with AI, that's when doors start opening. So my final advice to you is to focus on your portfolio first and then layer on additional skills based on what you're specifically targeting. Now, if you want to shortcut the entire process and get guidance directly from me, head to the link in the description. We have an accelerator with a full guarantee. We truly want you to succeed. And if you're looking for another video to watch on which projects you should actually have in your portfolio, check this one out. You don't want to miss it and I'll see you soon.